So I traded him wood for some Buffalo Trace and he has a new product that he just got in. It's called Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy. Today on In the Wood Yard, we're gonna put some wood in the baby dumper and go make a dump. Here we go. Where uh, the wood, that's the old wood ends right here. And this is the new stuff down here. So I've got a little bit of wood over there you can see on the ground yet. So I'll be uh, throwing that in here. So I'm gonna take right here and kind of clear this out. And then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna load some of the same wood into the trailer for a delivery tomorrow I have to do at the restaurant. So I'm gonna take some of this because I wanna clear it out a little bit more. And then we're gonna take some from the small stuff over there for the restaurant because this is good stuff too. I'll pull out some of the smaller ones for him because that's what he likes. So time to chuck some wood right now. So there we go, I have wood in the trailer. Now that is one third of a cord or one face cord, however you like to say it. Some people like to call it a rick, a rank, or a row. There's a lot of different names for it. And where you are in the country determines what you call stuff. Now, on the East Coast, legally, I guess you get arrested, beheaded, uh, you get your hands cut off or something if you say face cord. Apparently it's illegal. Um, we live here in the Midwest, I'm in Wisconsin, Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, the Dakotas, places like that. We use the term face cord. Now, I know some people say, that's not legal, you can't say that. Well, we have a little bit of freedom here yet. We can call it whatever we want. Down in the southern part of the United States, they call it, like I said, a rick, a rank, or a row. It's a third of a cord because they're 16 inch pieces, one row stack that's four feet high, eight feet long. This is the number one thing that comes up on the channel with people all over the country, or actually all over North America, that they argue about. Now the rest of the world, they go by cubic meters. They sell their wood in cubic meters. That's what they do, or by the ton. Now a cubic meter is cubic meter, and that is about eight tenths of a face cord or a third of a cord. So it's like 0.82 or something like that. So a little bit less than what this is. Now, people are gonna say, well, you don't know how much that is. That's just loose thrown in. You can't possibly know. Yes, I do. I've thrown in thousands, thousands of cords of wood into trailers, into trucks. And I know this one is completely full is two face cords or two thirds of a cord. So I fill it half full. When I think I got it half full, you know what I do? I throw a little extra in. You know who wins? I win, the customer wins. Everybody's happy and that's all that matters. They're getting a little extra wood. I don't have to stack wood. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I get comments all the time, well, that loose wood, you can't possibly know how much wood there is. Yes, I can. Like I said, I have thrown in so much wood into trailers into my truck. I know how much it is because I used to stack my wood for years, decades. I know how much wood when you take it from a full cord or a third of a cord and you throw it into a truck or a trailer, I know how much there is. It's always the same amount. It's just kind of weird how that works that you know, for decades I was throwing wood in and I would always end up with the same amount. Like, wow, that was a measured third of a cord and I threw it into my truck. It was the same it was last time. Then it started dawning on me because people are telling me, why are you wasting your time stacking wood? It's like, well, that way I know how much it is and it saves space and it looks nice and everything, which it does. And some people say it dries better. What it doesn't, the loose stuff dries better. It's fluffier, it takes up 30% more space. You got more air volume, so the air flows through it, it dries better. It just does. I know because I do this a lot. And I've talked to a lot of professionals that sell wood. Loose wood dries faster than stacked wood. You can believe what you want. That's what happens. Because when you stack the wood in tight, you're compressing it together, taking up less space, it doesn't breathe as well. When you got it loose like this, it dries faster, it dries better. I do a couple hundred cords a year and I've been doing it for a very long time. A lot of other professionals I've talked to, they say the same thing. Yeah, loose wood dries way faster. So there's that. You can believe what you want. I just happen to know the facts. So there's that. So I fill this halfway full. When I think I've got it to where it looks like halfway, I throw a little extra in, the customer gets a little extra wood. When I fill it full, it's two thirds of a cord. This is my baby dumper. It's working out absolutely awesome for dumping wood. And I'm gonna show you some things here. So in this pile here that I got for this wood from, I just grabbed it right from here because that is the new wood that I just split yesterday or the day before that's over in this pile you see over there by the splitter. I got that little bit left to do yet. So this is the wood that I dumped into the, the mud and dirt and everybody was so upset that it was gonna be you know really dirty and everything. Well, it wasn't, it ended up being just fine. And this is the wood that uh, needs to be sold yet. So this is about, about a year old. It's a mix of ash, um, maple, 
Uh, there might be a little bit of oak in there and some other stuff. It's kind of mixed up. Uh, now, I don't stack wood anymore, but I do have some stuff stacked. This was stuff that Bert stacked into these totes. He did this to get it off the ground because it was here this winter, and he wanted to uh, get it off the ground so he could do some snow plowing, which we didn't ever did much of because it never snowed much this year. This wood is all loose stuff. This we just did this winter. This is about uh, 20 full cords in here, mixed stuff. The little bit of stuff I have stacked is over here. We did some in some totes, and this is birch. And I did this mainly as a uh, demonstration to show people how to stack wood. Now the nice thing about stacking wood, as you guys know, hey girls, it takes up less space. It looks nice. Um, if you're in a residential area, there's nothing wrong with stacking wood. But I myself do not stack wood anymore because I figured out how long it takes me to stack wood to get the pallets down, to build the ends, whether I'm doing pallet ends or if I'm crisscrossing it to stack it up. Because I do a couple hundred full cords a year, if I was to stack a couple hundred, because I've done it for years, decades, um, it's, I save about 400 hours of work. Now the average person works about 2,000 hours a year. So what is that? Almost a quarter of a year's worth of work. You know what I do at that time? I cut more wood, I split more wood. I have more wood to sell. It's more profitable for me to make more wood than stack wood. Now, like I said, for the end user, for the homeowner, someone who's in a residential area, and say you, even if you heat with wood and you have, say you got 20 full cords that you need for heating, then it makes sense, you know how much wood you've got. It looks neat, it looks nice, it's organized. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But for what I do, yeah not stacking anymore unless it's for a demonstration or someone's paying me to do it. So down the road we go. We're going to go deliver the store right now. I have returned to the wood yard after my dump shove off. You saw what I did there on that last delivery is I backed into his garage and we shoved it off right by his rack. Now in the past, I had always taken the wood and just dumped it out at the end of his driveway. Kind of, He's got like a curved driveway. We kind of put it up into a corner there because it was out of the way for him and, and he thought that was kind of where I should put it. Well, when I got there, I saw he had his garage open. I saw his rack up in the front of his garage and I asked the guy, I said, are you gonna be putting your wood into the rack? He says, yeah. I says, well, I think I can make the corner and I can back in and get in back by your rack, tip the trailer up part of the way and we can shove the wood off right by your rack and that way you don't have to walk all the way, you know, through the garage, across the driveway to the far side and carry it back. He says, you can do that? I said, yeah, I think I can make the corner. So I took a little jockeying around, but I got it in there and we shoved the wood off. And I had to pull ahead a little because we couldn't get it all off because I couldn't raise the trailer up all the way because I was in a garage, but I got it up quite a bit probably halfway, so it worked out pretty good. So he was very happy about that. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is I always try to find out where the people are gonna put the wood that I'm delivering so that uh, it works good for them. And by doing that, you can save them a little bit of work, um, be a good guy, a girl, and uh, be a hero, and that's a good thing. Now, this is the guy that back, I think I said it was like three, four months ago, he, it was kind of difficult because he wanted wood and then said no, then yes, and then I, anyway, it was a big long story. This guy almost fired from being a customer, but I delivered to him and, uh, and he ordered again now, so that's good. Now, when I was leaving, he says, hey, he says, I work with a couple guys that were asking me about firewood. Do you have a business card? I said, well, sure, I'll give you a couple of them. He says, good. He says, because the guy they were using quit selling wood. So again, be the good guy, do the right thing. So this is probably gonna turn into a couple more firewood customers. So by calming down and not uh, getting all irate, like a lot of people told me, and I was almost considered telling the guy I don't have any more wood, I, I didn't wanna deal with him. It's gonna end up being a good thing, so stay calm. That's the, that's, the, that's the lesson for today, stay calm. So now I'm gonna throw in uh, about a half a load here of this wood that's in the bin right here. And then we're going to go up over by the snowman up there and we're going to put in some of the smaller stuff with it too. We're going to be mixing some bigger and smaller stuff because uh, this is going to be going tomorrow morning to our restaurant down in Oshkosh. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be mixing in some bigger stuff. And he said, that's perfectly fine. So I told him we're getting low on the small stuff and I don't want to just all of a sudden have all big stuff. So I'm going to kind of mix it up for him. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to chuck in some here and we're going to go up there and chuck some in right now. There 
it is, she's loaded. We're ready for tomorrow. So I'm gonna take this home now. I'm gonna back this into my garage because we're supposed to get one to three inches of wet, slush, slimy, slick, snotty snow tonight. And I can keep this dry. And then it's supposed to be done snowing before morning. And because it's supposed to be kind of a wet snow, I'm kind of thinking the roads are just gonna be wet. Uh, they don't anticipate the roads being bad because the temperatures are in the mid thirties. And I can keep this in my garage, keep it nice and dry. And then tomorrow morning we can go deliver this to the, to the restaurant. Look at that. Snow, it's a light skiff of snow. They told us we we're gonna get, it did happen. It is the next morning and uh, we only got about an inch of slushy stuff and we got blue skies coming so it's gonna melt off probably, but it's supposed to cool down. So what I did, you guys saw me load the load of wood and here it is in my garage. I uh, loaded it yesterday and then I backed it into the garage because I wanted to keep it dry because this is going to the restaurant. So I do that quite often. A lot of times if I have a delivery in the morning, so I just backed it in here and left my truck outside and I'm gonna hook it up. We're gonna go down to the restaurant and we're gonna deliver this load of wood. It smells fantastic in my garage because there's a mix of all kinds of wood in there. It just smells like uh, fresh cut wood. It smells really nice. Okay, it's time to get busy. And I don't have my spare tire mounted yet, so I just throw it in and I gotta take along my wheelbarrow and my hand cart so we can get the wood into the restaurant. Get in there. And I put these inside. I had them in the back of the truck from the wood yard because I keep them there. I put them in just so no one was tempted to borrow them from me permanently from the back of my truck. All right, I can back her up and hook her up. So I was told by someone on the channel when they saw me when I did my whole uh, upgrade to the trailer here that my safety hook is not supposed to go in the same hole as my safety chains but you know what there's no other hole so that's where it's going and if the dot wants to spank me i guess i'll take a spanking i ain't worried about it everything else is hooked up right so I'm not worried about it i have never been pulled over in my whoops my whole life when it comes to towing. I've never been pulled over once and guys ask me all the time, how in the heck do you get away with having B plates? Well, that's just what I got on my truck and I've never been pulled over, never been questioned. I think it's because I look like a homeowner, not like a commercial um, producer of a product that's being sold. So I've never had a problem ever. And uh, because I live in an area where there's lots of people, they got better things to do than pull over a guy pulling a trailer. So it has never happened. My brother asked me, he says, a lot, of, a lot of guys that see my channel that he knows are you know, commercial loggers and they get pulled over like every day. And, and they wonder, how do I get away with only having B plates? Well, when I got my truck, that's all I had was B plates. They got transferred, I wanted C's, forgot to say something. I thought, well, next time I update my plate, I'll get C's because legally I think I have to have C's. I don't know, I've been driving this truck for nine years like this, so I guess I'm, I'm ahead of the game. I don't know. But I do know all my trailers, I have them registered properly and I'm paying the amount that is required for what they can haul. So I know I'm covered there. So on my next truck, I will get the proper um, plates for it, I guess, because I should. So maybe next time I upgrade, next time I have to pay for, my uh, plates, I'll just transfer it to a C because I, I guess I never really thought about it. It's never been an issue. So I always check my hookup before I go. I double check it to make sure my plug is in, make sure my chains are on, make sure my breakaway is on, make sure my clasp collar is on and the pin is in, make sure the, uh, the foot for the jack is up. I make sure my lights are working. I always check everything before I leave. So it looks like we're all good to go. So let's go do a dump delivery, whatever you want to call it.
I have returned to the wood yard after my delivery and uh, this place that I go to, you guys have seen me there before. For those of you that watch the channel, you know this is a pizza restaurant. He has a pizza oven and he gets two face cords of wood about every two to three weeks. And uh, he's a real good regular customer. And uh, he sells stuff there that I, I kind of like a little bit. He has some of this. So I traded him wood for some Buffalo Trace and he has a new product that he just got in. It's called Barron's Old Fashioned Brandy. Now this, I didn't know this because I asked him, this stuff is made in Wisconsin and Barron's is for the comedian Charlie Barron's. If you guys have ever seen Manitowoc Minute or Charlie Barron's, look them up on YouTube. Hilarious stuff. If you're from the Midwest, you'll get his humor. Uh, but anyway, he started, he partnered with the company and started this uh, Selling some good stuff, I hope. He has never had it, um, the owner of Parm, and he says, take a bottle and try it. So I'm gonna try it. We're gonna see if it's any good. So apparently uh, Wisconsin made. So there we go. That's it for today, folks. I got what I need. I'm good. Gonna go home. Well, I'm not gonna have this. I'm gonna go home and have some lunch. But that's it for today. Come on back tomorrow, 5.30 a.m. We will have some more videos for you because that's what I do. Other than that, the best thing you can do right now is probably go watch more videos. Good night, Irene.